in the protagonists. Sure. And the fact that it wasn't in those protagonists is very, very disturbing to me to have these sort of like drifting middle class, or actually in his case, he's upper middle class. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, actually kind of rather sterile people. <laughs> you know, sort of yeah. caught up in this mystery. Yeah. But kind of like almost themselves personality-less. Hmm. You know, that, that, yeah. that to me is what stood out. And maybe it was conscious, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? You know, yeah. uh, in Apocalypto, the idea is that there's tremendous... And, you know, hostility within human beings. Human beings embody utterly, tremendously demonic forces. <laughs> and that, that, in the end, we might find that humanity... Remember we're talking about that post-human world after 2012? Mm, yeah, indeed. Yeah. I've always speculated that, look, no, it's not that humanity's going to be wiped out. It's that humanity won't want to be humanity. Hmm. Humanity will get so sick of its own emotions, because it doesn't know how to deal with emotions, that it will then become very cybernetic and technotronic. Hmm. Or it's just that human beings utterly lose their humanity within. Or that they get so sick of living amongst other people who have no soul and who are acting in a robotic way that it, it's not as much a threat to feel like you should go back and live in nature because of the two, it turns out that living amongst the nature again is even less threatening. <laughs> and we're seeing this. We're seeing a lot of people live from the West even going and back, living in, in third world countries. There's even people who are of money and status mm-hmm. who are going to Spain and believe me, Spain is definitely a third world country, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. In eastern Spain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. People are going out to Spain, you know, they're going out to uh, India and China. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they want some feeling of humanity. Yeah, sure. And they want to live in a way that's tribal, you know, and, and close to the ground. People going to Australia, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, see, and living in Africa even, there's a lot of this happening. Leaving the West because they're so sick and tired of the way that the West, quote unquote, Western you know, uh, system is being set up. It's just not sustainable. Hmm. So my theory is this, that never ever fear what is negative, because what is negative is already sending a signal to nature and me. Hmm. I am unsustainable. I can't last forever. Hmm. Yeah. It's horrible when it's lasting, yeah, to have McDonald's and Subway, you know, and Viacom and, and everything in your <laughs> face every day. Yeah. Yeah, it's not pleasant to, you know, have all that corporate rubbish but it cannot last forever because it's built on lies. Yeah, exactly. And the person yeah. of truth does not fight it in, a, in an active way like that. That won't work. <laughs> what you do is you educate yourself against it, you know, and you and you build a new system. You yeah. build a new way. Absolutely. Not Michael Tessarian's way. You know, I'm 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 studying this myself. But you, we all come together to discover what might work here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, ex- excellent stuff. I totally agree with with, with that, Michael. Uh, in case we have uh, some new listeners for us today, tell us about your website and your DVD, excellent DVD series, so people you know know how they can you know support your work and and, and get so much more of what you do. Well, yeah, the DVD that jumps to mind is Subversive Use of Sacred Symbolism. It's the bestseller of the series. Mm-hmm. Although you can buy the series as a whole unit, and you can you can browse the series on it has its own website, which is Origins and Oracles. Dot com and you can go in there. There's just you know 22 DVDs or something, 60 hours of yeah. material, <laughs> you know, and uh, definitely focus on the one that's uh, on symbolism because that will that covers a lot of ground. It does. It's into it the does. whole Masonic thing. It deals with the feminine concept. It deals with uh, the, the manipulation of letters and the manipulation of um, color and the use of very very ancient sacred symbols in a modern you know context of of the multimedia. And uh, very much emph- it's very much focused on astrology. There's a lot of the ancient symbols that are used in the mainstream today mm-hmm. are old alchemical and astrological, or what might more correctly be called astrotheological symbolism. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, well, something that uh, you know I, I wanted to stress on because there's a lot of people out there who've done the whole you know symbolism bit. You know that Procter and Gamble. You know they got a star. They must be evil. <laughs> you know kind of rubbish. But you know yeah, it's important yeah. to go way more beyond that and get yes. into the whole Masonic messaging that's going on here and who are these people sure why sure. would they want to be doing this and what, what why do they name cars the mercury you know mm-hmm. or whatever yeah. there's a whole other occult understanding of symbolism yeah. so if you're just into symbolism don't bother i'm dealing with the occult you know aspects of symbolism which is a whole different subject and again people need to understand that before they start emailing me with all these critiques mm. i'm an occultist i deal with the occult you know conspiratorial aspects of these subjects i'm not talking in harvard or princeton nor do i want to mm-hmm. getting up there talking about you know religious art Sure. And religious symbolism in a conventional way. That's not what we're doing. So everybody, uh, check it out. It's originsandoracles.com and, and also, of course, your personal website, michaeltessarion.com. And from there, people can uh, find your blog and yeah. uh, all, all your other sites also. 
Yeah, and again on the blog we got the symbolism section, mm-hmm. which is visited a lot. You know, and I try to keep I keep all the pages on the blog updated. So if you think you've seen it already, think again because every other day there's something new on on every page of the blog, from links. You know, and of course some of the stuff is linked to YouTube and Google, where what we link to is not there very long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're exactly. gonna miss it. You know, so yeah. make sure you're coming back regularly, because some of the links, you know, they appear then they disappear. This is one of the downsides. Yeah. Of is. Google and YouTube, you know, yes. I mean, I understand it of course, but you know, again. If a couple of weeks go by, you could miss something really heavy, really something very interesting. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish off this segment. But, uh, Michael, again, thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with us. And we will talk more in the uh, subscriber section. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Henrik. Thank you. We are going to continue our talk with Michael Tessarion in the subscriber section. We are going to spend some time talking about the tarot and the origins and age of it. We'll also talk about the connection to the regular card deck and also about eschatology and Catholicism and a whole lot more. So I hope you'll join us. If you're currently not a subscriber, click on subscribe from our front page and uh, read more about it. If you like this radio program, do consider signing up with us. This is the best way to help and support what we are doing here. The website, of course, is redicecreations.com. Stop by daily to follow along in the news, and uh, don't forget to check out our forum. Thanks to producer Fredrik Palmgren, and a big thanks to you for tuning in to the show. We will be back on Sunday again with a new program lined up. Until then, take care.